Oh, that's... that's be... Look, that's very nice of you. That's very nice of you. But what I really need is seven million dollars by the end of this month to keep this show <laughs> on the air. <laughs> You're a wire tonight. There's Mr. Fashion Plate. Wow. Well, I like this. <laughs> Two weeks in Italy, you came back with a whole new wardrobe. You got it. Spent all your money in. Good looking. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, here we are. Yep. <laughs> Tonight's show with our thought for the day. Do you realize that there are children alive today who have never known the world without an ice slip garbage barge? <laughs> well, it, there, there is good news and bad news. The bad news is that garbage cow is still anchored in New York Harbor right. after what, 60 days? Yeah. The, the, the good news is the captain is a bachelor. <laughs> well, let's see, what do we, what do we work on? <laughs> What do we worry? There's a lot of things going on in the news. Uh, came out, as you probably know, that Jim and Tammy Baker. Um, <laughs> what a fun-loving couple they are. They had, apparently, they had this penthouse fixed up at the Heritage Club, uh, at the PTL, and um, it was pretty lavish. It had gold bathroom fixtures, and she had a closet, 60 feet long, with chandeliers in the closet. Now, that's a little ridiculous. I found that. Klieg lights will do an adequate job. <laughs> Not only that, but Tammy had each false eyelash on a separate hanger. What can I say about uh, this young man? He is probably the hottest motion picture star working today. Uh, the first Beverly Hills Cop was one of the biggest openers ever, and the second one seems to be doing even better, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Would you welcome, please, Eddie Murphy. I guess they don't like you. <laughs> you ever get tired of hearing that when you, uh, never, when you never, walk never. out? Not at all. Yeah, thanks for coming tonight. Thanks for having me again. Do, do the laugh for me. When you no, get tickled, do the laugh. <laughs> I'll laugh before we finish. So no, no, they can do it. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there <that ain't> you <laughs> What were you doing 10 years ago this year? You remember? Uh, was, 10 years ago. I was stealing somebody's bike. <laughs> <laughs> More than like. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah, I'm 26, 16. Yeah, 16 we were going over into Merrick and steal bikes. Uh, remember Clint? Yeah. And they caught us and they jumped Woody Miller's mom when she came to get us. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> <What'd> you... <laughs> <laughs> no, not Woody. Not Woody. Who's, whose mother came and they hit his mother? It was because they came because they had us beating us up and the mother came and said, let my son go in. There. And they took a shot at the mother? But it wasn't Woody. It was somebody's, mo somebody's mother got beat down in Merrick. I don't know who it was. Uh, did you bring a gang with you here tonight? I brought what? my friends with what, me. Uh, what's the statute of limitations on? I think you're over it anyway. Huh? It's only 16, 10 years from now. I don't think they can prosecute you. But you wouldn't recommend that kids go around go this on bicycles. Nah, we, it was just, we didn't have no bikes, so we stole them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't think of a better reason. Hey, man, he's got a bike. Let's take it. Uh, did you ever think in your wildest dreams, Eddie Murphy, 16 years ago, bike thief would be where you are today? No, I don't know. Well, well you must have had some thoughts. I mean, you, you obviously you like to entertain, and then Saturday Night Live came along, and, you, you know, people dream about big things happening, but did you think it'd be this big? I, um, I don't I guess you don't think... When you're stealing a bike, you just think, get this bike and leave. <laughs> you don't work on the chain going, you know, maybe one day I might be on the Tonight Show. <laughs> well, you're skipping the bike. <laughs> all you... okay. So all you young bike boosters out there watching tonight, remember, no, don't. <laughs> you can have guys in the backseat of police cars going, I'm going to be a star one day. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's true. Do you have a happy childhood growing up? Do you have very a fun, happy, fun time? Very happy, very, very normal childhood. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if I asked you this. Do you have brothers and sisters? Or? I got two brothers, big yeah. brother and little brother. Vernon and Charlie. Are they here? Somewhere. Yeah, Vernon and Charlie over here. There you go, Vernon. My little brother's boxing. He's going to be a boxer. Is he any good? He's bad. He'd be bad good. dude? Yeah, yeah. bad. Yeah, are you going to, are you going to, uh, what do you say, support him or, uh, well, I guess you manage him or anything like that? No, man. My, my, my father's training him with, uh, my father used to box, perfect, be a professional boxer. I didn't boxer. know that. Yeah. That's a tough way to make a living. That's a tough way to be disciplined, too, when you're young. <laughs> Which your dad was in. Girl, you stole a bike yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you, uh, you you keep in touch with your old friends. Oh, a lot they, of people they're all here. A lot of here. people don't. I've seen I've seen people as soon as they hit it big, all of a sudden somebody will call and say, "Man, I don't know you from you know nowhere." They just disappear. Oh no, man! My all my buddies from high school are with me still. Like the guys I hung out with in high school and junior high school are around me every. Because I guess it's hard to meet new people and be because everybody's your yeah. friend as soon as they meet you. Now I got sure. all my old buddies with me. Still. Can you tell the difference when people come up to you? It is difficult when you're the public eye. We all face that. Whether people want to meet you because they want something or they just generally like you, you, you get a little distancing sometimes, don't you, from people because you don't know what they're hitting on you for. Just I, to be your friend or whether they... Uh... I've, I've been pretty fortunate in that um, I haven't come in contact with too much of that. Yeah. You know, I've been fortunate. But are you pretty much of a loner when you're... What do you do when you're not there? Oh, no, I'm not a loner at all. I got, I'm telling you, I got my, all my, all my, we walk into place today, you just saw the people in the back, who are all these Negroes coming in? <laughs> <laughs> what's interesting, what's interesting, that was Floyd the Shoeshine Man who said that. <laughs> <laughs> you met Floyd down here. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta steal that laugh. It's infectious. You always laugh that way when you get yeah. tickled. Yep, yeah, that's my laugh. Yeah, it comes out. So Beverly Hills Cop just opened the other last night. Y'all gotta go see this movie. This is a, it's funny in the first one. Yeah, what they say. <laughs> and the dude, the dude that does the L.A. The, the, uh, Gary Franklin, he gave it. I want to reach in the TV and slap that man in his mouth. <laughs> Good, good movie. Old, good old He's a Jerry good, Franklin. He, he, Gary, Gary Frank is a good oh. movie. He's like, oh, it's terrible. I want, you know, I don't, a lot of actors say like they don't mind when critics give them bad reviews. I want to punch the critic in the eye if they say something. <laughs> I don't like it. And it's, it's a good movie. It's a fun yeah. movie. And we've been getting pretty much good reviews. This one guy, I wanted to kick his nose. <laughs> 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 Sorry. It's, a, it's a good picture. Why don't you, why don't you go steal his bike? <laughs> That'll teach him. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> We're talking, of course, with Eddie Murphy. I asked you what you were doing 16 years ago. Do you remember your first appearance on this show? Yeah. I guess it was just after you January started. January 1st, 1982. You're kidding. That was when you were doing Saturday night, right? Yeah. Why, well, you got a clip? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the first show. I remember that. Yeah, I was petrified, man. Yeah. I was petrified. You, uh, your and video. you were there. Right. And you were there. Oh, yeah. We both, <laughs> we both showed up that night. Uh, you did a video, successful? Music video? We did a, a whole album that yeah. was pretty successful. Yeah. About two years ago. We're working on another album now. Do you like the way it came out, the way you sang? Um, my album could have been much better, uh, but it came out okay. This next album is going to be... Live. I think everybody that does an album say, ooh, the next one is going to drive you crazy. But uh, <laughs> this one is, uh, I'm get a, getting a little bit more involved with it. Yeah. You know? Now, you've made, uh, I hate to be, uh, you know, bring up things like this, but you're, you're making a ton of money. Not, and as what, not as much as you. Well, I don't own it. <laughs> <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> but you have never been married. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta spread a little of that around to keep people happy, you see. <laughs> and you should. I mean, if you bring money in at the box office, I've never, it doesn't bother me that people get big salaries in the business if they bring people into the box office, you're entitled. But it's changed your life, obviously. Now, do you, you, you go out and really go nuts with it, or do you put it away, or how do you handle the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't need a bike, so, you know. <laughs> do I go out and go nuts with it? Uh, well, some people do. 
they I go crazy. I think it's healthy to go crazy sometimes, you know, but uh, uh, for the most part, I'm a pretty, I think I'm, I'm conservative. I, I don't live above my means at all. Yeah. You know, I have well, fun. Well, it's tough to live above your means. No. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got a lot of means there. <laughs> But I you know have, what I'm saying. Yeah, you go, have, you see something, you fun. walk down the street and you look in the store when you say, man, look at that. I, and you can just walk in off the street and say, yeah, I want that. That Yeah, I do that some, sometimes. That's a good, that's a good, that's one of the good things that comes out of... Now, what would catch prison. your eye in a window if you're walking down the street? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. That's a Especially weird question. watch, a, a coat. A, <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 What do you like? What catches your eye? Ed? Yeah, that's right. I don't know. Wait, look at that shiny ring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Amos, get a load of that coat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't saying you boost coat. Mmm, <laughs> that's a mighty big watch now. <laughs> No, I remember the first time I had some money, I went in and bought an expen a very expensive wristwatch, which is kind of silly because you lose them all the time. But I wanted to have that because I'd seen people have those big, great watches and you go in and buy them. I like, I'm a watch freak. Are I you like watch watches. freak? Yeah, I like watches. Uh, but I don't know. I, I think I've passed that stage of uh, things. I don't go out and shop that much anymore. It's yeah. pretty much a... Do you, have a do you have a steady lady friend? Not really. Well, you're, you're young at something. I have a friend, you know, but not, you know. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's not like. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, a friend in a platonic no, the, relationship? No, yes, friend? That, it's like, uh, I know it's a bunch of ladies I know that did like this when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> he might mention my. I'm going to see what he's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked you. I can see my people talking about me. Yeah. Right? Okay, we'll get off the first. And then later think. on this week, I'm going, baby, you so special. You, go, you ain't think so on the Tonight Show. <laughs> <laughs> what, you forgot my special name that night? <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're young. Baby, you know you know you're special. That's right. <laughs> I had to say your name because you know it's you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, that, covers a lot of... oh. that covers on next month's action pretty well, doesn't it? I mean... <laughs> Got a blanket endorsement there. Um, <laughs> look, we got a film clip, do we not, from uh, from Beverly Hills Cop 2? Uh, I, have, I haven't seen it, so do you know what, what we're going to see in this clip? There's a, it's a scene where uh, the, ins the inspector, the new inspector in Beverly Hills, comes and catches me in the office going over, doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. He doesn't know who I am, so I have to make up a character real quick to get out of the room, and it's pretty okay. funny. Watch the monitor from Beverly Hills Cop 2. These are shell casings left over from the first robbery at Adriano's. These are 44 Automax. They don't even make these anymore. They're too expensive. Shh. Put this stuff away. Who's this? I got it. I got it. Lutz. All right, showtime. What the hell's going on here? Who the hell are you? Uh, Chief, this is... Shut up, Rosewood! Uh, my name is Johnny Wish Wishbone. Johnny Wishbone and I'm a psychic from the island of St. Croix. Yes, I'm a psychic from the island of St. Croix, and I read in the St. Croix Gazette that the Beverly Hills Police Department had some trouble figuring out crimes. So what I did was come to Beverly Hills to help the police out. They tell me they don't want my help, they don't need my help, so I'm gonna go on my merry way. I'm a psychic. I'm a psychic phenomenon. Watch this. I don't know who you are, but watch this. Um, your name is, um, Lutz, right? Chief Lutz, that's your name, see? The name pop inside my head like that. And your name is, um, um, Biddle? Biddle, yes, see? And you give two more seconds, I would say to myself, I don't need no help from no one because I'm Johnny Wishbone, psychic extraordinaire. If you need me, just think Johnny Wishbone and I come running. Lots and Biddle. It's like kibbles and bits, but. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry to bother you. No, 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 What the hell is going on? What is this, a magic? <laughs> Thank you. That's a funny clip. That that's, was one. That's an okay clip for them. I'm telling you, the movie moves. There's no. Yeah, that's just an okay clip. Yeah, that's pretty an funny. Okay clip. The movie is. I'm telling you, the movie is live. Yeah. Who else on the show tonight? Well, uh, who we got? We have a, a lady by the name of Ellen DeGeneres, a comedian. Jane Leaves. I can stay, right? Because I, I know a lot of entertainers come in and after they do their thing, they're going, "Well, John, I have things, other engagements, and that crap." I can stay. You don't have anything to do. Yeah. Well, stay. <laughs> that's a big call. I couldn't say. 
Well, you know, Johnny, uh, I'm on the set. Very nice to be here, but I got a plane to catch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on the set at six. Yeah, I must right. leave tonight. Well, great, here. hang out, hang out. Now, now where's Chris Jackson at? Do you know a guy named Chris Jackson? Do I know who? Chris Jackson. Where's he at? Chris Jackson. Did you see a guy backstage with the, with the clean head with the hat on? Chris Jackson. Who's Chris Jackson? Chris Jackson is the funniest man. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a hotel room last night, right? And this guy, this guy does an impression of Prince. Yeah. That is the uh, funniest. Is this Chris ever. Jackson? Chris, come here. Come, come here, here, Chris. Chris. I, never, I don't know who. <laughs> Hello, Chris. How you doing? How you doing? How are you? Good to see you. Hey, everybody, Chris Jackson. Chris. Sure, go ahead and do the little Prince thing. You don't have to be doing it A young comedian has been with us before. She appears um, frequently at the Improvisation in Hollywood, and she's going to be opening for Dolly Parton at the Golden Nugget in Atlantic City, May 22nd through the uh, 24th, and May 26th through the 31st. She'll be at the Punchline in North Lake, Georgia. Would you welcome Ellen DeGeneres? Ellen. <laughs> This is great. My name is Ellen. It's a pretty good name. I like it now. When you're a kid, you want a cuter name. You know, something like Cindy, Debbie, Julie, something with an E. I tried Ellen for a while. It didn't work out real well. <laughs> Could have been worse. My parents almost named me Falling Rock, which uh, my father, Loose Pebble, was hoping for a boy, I think. <laughs> Did some research. The Indians used to name their children names that would impress the other tribes. That's why they had names like Running Brave, Bighorn, things like that to impress the other tribes. Of course, they don't do that anymore. Now, now the modern Indians, as opposed to the Deco Indians, have changed with the times. And uh, now more popular name today uh, is a uh, little microwave is popular today. Yeah. At night, you'll hear, micro, time for dinner. Tell your brother's two-car garage and bubbling hot tub to get in here. <laughs> I was raised in the Indian neighborhood, I know. The Indians took so much kidding, too, because they'd go to the fancy restaurants for dinner, and the maitre d' would say, uh, do you have reservations <laughs> to the Indians? And the Indians... <laughs> and... Yeah, and the Indians would say, no, no, we're sure we're gonna eat here. You know, they had a little bit of wit. They finally had enough of it, though, and they opened up their own place, and we'd go to them, and they'd say, do you have reservations? Would say, no, 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 condominiums. He'd say, okay, fine, and he'd sit us down, and... <laughs> Indian waiter would come up to greet us and he'd say, how? We'd say, medium rare, but you don't even know what we want yet. <laughs> They'd kick us, kick us out. Indians will turn on you like that. So I'm walking down the street. I was attacked, mugged by an Indian mugger. His name was Running Purse. Walks up to me, just, just about to attack me. I pulled out my mace. He says, ah, you call it mace. We call it corn. And he ate it, which was... Uh, So Ellen's a pretty good name, you know. You want, you know, that's a tough job for a parent to name a kid the rest of your life. That's a big responsibility to be a parent. I'm a godmother now. Uh, he's four, he's this big, in case you ever see him. And uh, <laughs> calls me God for short, I think that's good. <laughs> I don't know, I don't think I'd want to be a mother though. That's just such a big, you know. You see these mothers with babies and you j they always talk for the baby. You know, you always walk up and you say, oh, what a cute baby, what's your name? The woman always say, my name's Tammy. <laughs> say, I'm four weeks old. <laughs> say, I'm cranky because I didn't have a nap today. <laughs> and mommy dropped me. <laughs> you know, but the woman just 
she gets so used to speaking this way, you go to her home and say, oh, what a lovely coffee table. She say, thank you. <laughs> say, I'm a new coffee table. <laughs> say, I used to be in the other room, but Miss Margaret moved me. Yes, she did move me. Yes, she did. <laughs> their minds, you know, he drinks a cup of hot coffee. Ooh, Sam, hot coffee sale burn you. Ah! you know? I don't know, that's a, such a, I, I'm having a hard enough time just finding a mate, you know, that's step one. Then you have the, you know, but I'm human, that's, that's good, at least I'm human. That's an easier time, at least I'm not a spider, you know. <laughs> Black Widow, that's a tough courtship, isn't it? You know, <laughs> you know what they do? Immediately afterwards, she kills him and eats him. Which, when you think about this, it's not that bad of an idea, really, you know? Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we all make mistakes, you know? You just don't want that evidence walking around. <laughs> this poor spider guy, though, he has no idea what's about to happen. So right afterwards, he looks over. So, baby, how... Whoa! <laughs> Kills him. You'd think he'd catch on. His friends are dropping off like crazy, you know? <laughs> so what happened to Stan? I know you were dating him. Fishing accident, huh? Okay. I don't know. It's, it's all relationships, though. It's whether you're human, you're a spider, it's all, it's tough. My boyfriend just broke up with me back in, um, 72, I guess it was. <laughs> yeah. You never forget that. You never do. I'll never forget what he told me when he broke up with me. He said, hey, Dunky? That's what he called me, Dunky. <laughs> he couldn't pronounce Ellen. He said, listen. <laughs> listen, I'm going, I'm leaving, I can't take this. I said, fine, fine, boo-boo cakes. That's what I called him, Boo Boo Cakes. That was his name, actually. <laughs> so, hated that name. You always realize these things after they break up with you. All these things you hated about them, things you don't even know why you were with them in the first place. <laughs> Women are laughing. Men are saying no. I, uh, we're so picky. I used to hate this about him. He used to always wear a dicky. Do you remember these things, dickies? Always. Not even with a shirt. In the summer, he'd wear shorts <laughs> and a dicky. shells around the dicky, just a ridiculous tan line, you can imagine. <laughs> you know, you're with somebody for a little while, little things just all of a sudden just start grating on your nerves after a while. Not even a bad habit sometimes, but it's just something you just, finally you just, one day you snap. You just, will you please stop that, that breathing in and out. <laughs> so repetitious. <laughs> Thank you, that's very nice of you. Was, are you here to see me, or you were just ducking in to try to get away from the Malathion outside? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Those of you who are new to California, every couple of years we have what they call a medfly infestation. They're little teeny flies, but they do a lot of damage. They found four of them. And because they found four of them, they had to sp spray 16 square miles here in the valley for four little teeny flies. Yeah. <laughs> and they say, don't worry about it can't it's harmless to you but they suggest you cover your automobile <laughs> because it can take the paint off i have not figured that out yet <laughs> now on top of that the latest report is they've released 20 million sterile male medflies in the valley um, then we found out actually they're not sterile uh, 
they're just putting off having children till their careers get off the ground. <laughs> I, uh, I almost did not make it out here. Oh. I got a lift to work today from Cher's boyfriend. <laughs> This should be an interesting show tonight. We have the governor of Arkansas, uh, the Governor Bill Clinton here tonight. You probably remember. <laughs> governor Clinton, I'm sure, remembered did the nominating speech uh, for Michael Dukakis at the Democratic National Convention. So, but uh, not to worry, we've got plenty of black coffee and extra cots in the lobby. <laughs> anyway, the governor will be, he's, he's gonna get his, the governor's here for equal time tonight, and I think it's a good move. Anyway, this just came in on the news. George Bush just offered $5 billion to get back into the presidential campaign. <laughs> You've heard about Ferdinand Marcos trying to get back into the Philippines? Apparently, according to the Los Angeles Times, he offered the Philippine government $5 billion. Where he's going to get it, we don't know, but apparently he's got it, to come back to the Philippines. The Philippines have not responded, but Marcos has been offered a lovely room with a view of the water slide at PTL's Heritage Village. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, George Bush in the latest polls, did you notice, is behind Michael Dukakis? Yeah, very interesting. Uh, what, what George is trying to do, he's trying to uh, reshape his image. He says he's not just a wealthy preppy. Um, in fact, to prove his point, he said he just selected his running mate, Bartles. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I did not know this, he is trying to narrow the gender gap by appealing to women. It's, according to the polls, more women find Michael Dukakis more attractive than George Bush. Is that true? Yeah. Women? Yeah. Yeah. George is trying to narrow that gap. He addressed a women's organization yesterday, and I thought he went a little too far when he yelled, Ich bin ein Leg Shaver. Too far. Uh, I mean, George can't understand why he's not more popular with women. After all, he was he spent eight years as uh, Nancy's vice president. <laughs> now there's there's talk he may select a woman as his running mate. Not a yeah. Think Vanna White would take it? <laughs> well, Mr. Happy News, Surgeon General Coop came out with another bulletin today on how we're all killing ourselves. Surgeon General Coop says we are having too much fat in our diet and not enough fiber. Did you ever take a close look at the Surgeon General? <laughs> He, he didn't get that spare tire from eating trail mix. <laughs> I mean, he's a nice man, and I know he's looking out for all our welfare health-wise, but first he tells us no cigarettes, no...